let the fire come down. Let the joy of the Lord come down. Hallelujah. Let the fire from heaven come down. God, I pray for every preacher in this place tonight. Lift your hand, preacher. If you're a preacher here, I pray for every preacher tonight that there will be a special anointing and a boldness of the Holy Ghost come upon us and give us strength to stand. Be staunch in the Word of God. Uh, Come on, church. Pray with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. None of this little quiet stuff. Pray. Cry out to God uh, where the fire of God will fall upon us and God will stir our hearts uh, and we'll come back to some old-fashioned repentance. Oh, yes, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He sandalamahatai alabahoka. Lift your hand, everybody in the auditorium. Halamahatai. Move on us tonight, God. Let the sweeping power of the Holy Ghost grip us, God. Let some of the old-fashioned conviction of God rub off on us. Give us gumption. Give us strength. Give us backbone. Glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You can be seated for just a few more moments. In 1995, Dr. Harvey Cox, the professor of religion at Harvard University, received a telephone call from an editor, one of the associate editors of Time magazine. And Time said, Dr. Cox, we know you'd be interested. Our next issue is coming out. The cover will say in bold letters, Is God Dead? Do you have any comments? Dr. Cox said he was taken back. He was in shock by Is God dead? So immediately he called on his team and they began to do research. They began to do research on this subject and he found out, much to his dismay, that yes, there was a mass exodus out of mainline churches. Those mainline or older churches that have been denominations like, I'm just naming it tonight, like Presbyterian and Methodist, John Wesley's own movement that he found. At one point, there were 70 million Methodists in this world. 70 million. They'd do good if they have a fourth of that today. And these mainline churches, they were mass exiting by the millions. I believe the Lutheran church had a 40% loss. Episcopalian church was way high. It was, I don't remember all the statistics, but it just was flabberg- but flabbergasting. But while they were finding all this out through research, they said there's another group emerging. It's called the Pentecostals. <laughs> said by the millions... They're springing up so fast, nobody can really keep count of them. I can't answer for all that, and we're not even going to park here. But I want to tell you, they're sweeping up in convents. They're coming out of, they're in all these, many of these denominations that I name, Pentecostal groups are there speaking in tongues, hungering for God. And I'm not here to discredit them. I thank God that they have a hunger. But God, I just want to point out to you that God is going to always have a church. And Brother Mullins, it's not going to happen. But if the United Pentecostal Church turn their back on God and this truth and this message, it's not going to stop God. Do you hear what I'm saying? God 
He said, if, if these stones don't praise me, or you don't praise me, I'll raise up these stones to praise me. God will have a people that are going to praise him. He's going to have a revival in this world. Come on, church. If you believe he's going to have a revival, lift up your voice. Let the... Come on. See, I believe. <laughs> I believe. I believe. I believe. While we're advocating the move of the Holy Ghost and hungering for it. For the fire to fall. See, I believe in the signs and the wonders and the miracles. I believe that in this meeting tonight, every sick body, this is what I believe. I want you to hear me. Look at me. There isn't a disease in this room that my God does not have power over. Come on. This kind of preaching should, we should be having miracles just all over the building from the back. The cripple walking, the lame walking, goiters, tumors, diseases of all kinds, extracted from the body by the hand of Almighty God. Everybody praise Him right now. His healing power is in this place. His healing power is in this place. Healing, miracles, let the fire fall. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Grant it, Jesus, grant it, Jesus, grant it, Jesus, grant it, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. It's in the book, folks. It's in the book. 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 Let's not have anything but red hot church. Let's have Holy Ghost church. Let's have revival church. Let's let us hoes get excited. Let's let the fire burn. Come on now. Let's let it burn in our hearts. Let's hunger for the real thing. Let the fire of God fall. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what God's doing, what He's doing today, and what He can do tomorrow, what He has done in the past. Right up north of us is a little town called Lodi. About 75 years ago, in the congregational church in Lodi. There was a pastor by the name of Dr. Price. Dr. Price, a woman come through town, pitched a tent in Lodi. She was a spirit-filled woman and preached a revival there, and he went out to see what it was all about. The big stiff neck pastor of the Congregational Church. But something got a hold of him. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. He went back to his church on Sunday morning and he preached the power of the Holy Ghost and it fell. It fell mightily. He didn't quite have a majority. So he ended up out on the street with the 45% that went with him. But this man became a flaming torch. I've read his books. My grandmother, Sophie Haney, used to talk about him because she knew him. And this man became a flaming torch preaching all over the world, had some of the greatest signs and wonders and miracles. God can take anyone he wants to take that will love this message and will hunger for the Holy Ghost, he can turn. I'm going to tell you, I'm praying for the kind of a revival. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall where Catholic priests will receive this wonderful revelation 
and God will anoint them and speak through them where clergymen of other denominations will say, I'm tired of the formality. I'm tired of the ritualism. I, I want the power of God to move. Church, we ought to be screaming our lungs out tonight and saying, God, we want the move of the Holy Ghost and we want the fire of God to fall upon us. The miracles of God, the miracles of God, the miracles of God. We hunger for those miracles. We hunger for the power of God. Mr. Finney had so much of this. Mr. Finney was a lawyer, a young young lawyer in 1850. He was so full of God that everywhere he went, he prayed hours every day. I've read stories of Mr. Finney, and when I would read them, I'd just want to be more like Jesus. But he was so full of fire and power and prayer that when you stood in his presence, if you was not right with God, you begin to tremble. That doesn't just come when you sign the religious roster. Somebody has to have an in with a God. Mr. Finney, one time they tell about he was riding on a train, went through this little town. As it slowed down, it actually stopped. And when it stopped, there were guys sitting in the tavern on stools, drinking, cursing, mad men, evil men. Started falling off chairs. Some of them started trembling. Some of them started crying, looking. What's wrong with you? And then, what's wrong with me? They didn't know that there was a praying man of God that represented Jesus Christ out there. I'm going to tell you something. This business, this gospel that I'm talking to you about tonight is not just something you put on a signboard. It's not something for a billboard. It's not something that just publishes another magazine. This is something that's heaven born. It comes down from God and it'll change the life of men. God, send it. Let it happen. In Evan Roberts, I did well, that revival. It swept the New York newspaper, America. Headlines. Evan Roberts' revival swept Wales, closed dance halls, closed bars and taverns, The police were not needed. All the gangs and all the madmen were converted. I'd like to read that in some publications today. You don't have to worry about building more penitentiaries because there's a revival hit America. Close down the courtrooms. We don't need the trials because men want to live for God and they're pure. Close down the drug, the drugs and the alcohol. The gangs are getting saved. There's no business here in America. You can't market your wares over here. We're having revival in America. The Holy Ghost is here and the fire has fallen. If you believe it can happen and you'd love to see it happen, put your hands together and just scream. Just scream. Become a wild man for God. I want it, 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 I want it! Jesus! There's a move of the Holy Ghost here. There's some fire falling even in the back corners of this building.
Let the fire fall, 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 let the fire of the Lord fall. Let me tell you something, church. It is very easy to get caught up in the society of religion, the Pentecostal society. We cannot live there. We will not live there. It is wrong, and it is not pleasing to God. We're either apostolic or we're fooling ourselves. I just kind of close with this. I got to talk to my friend tonight earlier, Freddie Clark, and I've known him a long time, and God has used him in miracles. But I want to say this. My mother, uh, many of you knew her, she wrote, Sister Wallace, Mary Wallace, published a, a, a book about 15 years ago, profile of Pentecostal missionaries. And my, some of you read it. My grandmother and grandfather were missionaries to Japan for like, um, I guess, 40 years. So the, Sister Wallace asked my mother to write a, a brief biography of May Gray and Frank Gray. And she was in that, she, used, she said, one of my favorite memories was my mother, before I went to bed, telling me stories of great moves of God. She would name people like Wigglesworth. And then, but she said my favorite story, and I, I get this down and would read it every so often because mom wrote it, and she said my favorite story was about a woman who was in a church and she had a disease, a cancer that had destroyed her nose. But she had childlike faith. Of course, they didn't have all the medical access to medics that they have today. And she believed God was going to restore and give her a new nose. So she would walk around and sometimes downtown, she'd say to people, see my new nose? And they were embarrassed. She kept doing this. See my new nose? She'd do it in church. Some of the saints went to the pastor and said, you've got to stop her. It's ridiculous. She'd say, see my new nose? There's a lot of things in the realm of the spirit that may seem to be ridiculous. That's another world. And I'm learning more about that world. said, see my new note. Every morning she'd look. One morning she woke up. She went and looked in that mirror. And there it was. Oh, you say, I don't believe it. That's your privilege. I believe it. Because I know how my God is. He created this body. He can create a leg. He can create a finger. He can create anything because he's God. I'm talking about the old time fire of God falling from heaven.
Glory, 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 glory. If you're one of those folks tonight that there's a hunger on the inside of you for more of the fire and the power of God, why don't you stand to your feet while you're standing, lift your voice, shake your head, clap your hands, stomp your foot, say, God, I want this move of the Holy Ghost. I want it! I want it! Give it to me, Jesus! Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. We need some fanatics for Jesus tonight. We need some fanatics for him. God, we just don't want to be ordinary. <laughs> We're the soul of the earth. We're a city that's set on a hill. We must not be hid. We cannot conform to what others are. We have to pattern ourselves after that book right there. In Jesus' name, I'm taking my time a little bit, church, but I think you're with me tonight, and I think you're hungering for the move of God. It's not one thing in lieu of the other. You can have it all. You can have righteousness and holiness and sound doctrine and the fire of God falling from heaven. You can have every bit of it. I want every man and woman, every boy and girl that wants to make a brand new commitment for the fire to fall and you be the vessel like Evan Roberts, whatever it takes, God, I want you to burn a fire on the inside of me to start walking these aisles and head here. It's not, you're not too old a grandma to come. You're not too old of a grandfather to come. You're not too young to come. Come on. We need to come and we need to say, God, this is what we yearn for. We hunger for it. Use me. Make me that vessel. Come on. Walking down those aisles, start crying out to God. Everybody's coming. Come on. Ha ha. We're coming tonight in Jesus' name. Ha 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 ha. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come quick. Press in. Press in. Press in. Raise your voice to now. Raise your voice. Raise your voice unto the Lord. Come on, stretch those hands up toward heaven. Stretch them up, stretch them up, stretch them up. Call out on God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Lord, breathe on us tonight, breath of God, breathe on us, breath of God, breath of God, breath of God, breathe on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name. Ah, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Brothers and sisters, let me have your attention just a moment. Brothers and sisters, it's an awesome spirit, and I, I just want to thank you in behalf of my Lord for your response to the preaching of the Word. But this is all about change, changing our way, changing our attitude, getting a grip on this thing. We cannot vacillate. We cannot even consider vacillating. We are here. We are anchored. If you don't know what you believe, you are a miserable person. If you don't know what you stand for, you're going to be knocked around every way you go. You've got to know what you believe. And those are the basic principles, the very foundation. We should all know that by now if we've been born again. It's time to go on to some real intercessory prayer and travail, hunger for the move of God. You, you know what? You're going to get exactly what you talk about. Listen to me. Listen. Your, your voice, your tongue controls everything about your life. Talk to yourself. I'm no good. I'm lousy. I'm a failure. I'm going to backslide. I'm going to lose with God. You'll do all those things. But talk to yourself and say, I can do all things through Christ. Hey, you, you talk this way. Jesus lives here. And where I go, I'm representing him. I'm his feet. I'm his hands. I'm his voice. That's what the scripture teaches. You have to live worthy of that. We need that great revival. Let me just see the hands of everybody that's really hungry for the fire. It's what I was talking about tonight. The fire, 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 let it fall. Fire, let it fall. Fire, let it fall. Okay. You know what I believe we can do? This is what I want you to do. I don't want to hurt anyone tonight. I don't want, if you, if you, if you can't do this, you don't feel good about it, that's up to you. You as a spirit-filled person, you have Jesus in you. You have the Holy Ghost, right? How many has the Holy Ghost? That, that, the Holy Ghost is the ghost of Jesus. You don't understand it, but that's what it is. It's the spirit of Jesus. You got him in you. He said, I am now with you. I shall be in you. John 14. That's the word of God. He's in you. If he's in you, you can minister to one another. So, well, I'm not worthy to minister. Well, you got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will work through you. You may not be worthy, but he'll work through you. So quit putting yourself down. Number one, talk. I am God's child. I'm God's anointed. I've been washed by Jesus' blood. I'm sanctified. I'm pure. I'm holy in Jesus. My holiness is in him. He lives on the inside of me. Now that is true. If that is true, every one of us can minister to, to someone else. And tonight, this is the way I want you to minister. Now there could be many healings here, many, who you just can't imagine. You that don't, do not have the Holy Ghost that are anywhere in this group, you, you can walk out of here speaking in tongues full of the Holy Ghost. You, you should. Uh, whatever your need is physically, it could be taken care of. But what we really need to minister to one another about tonight, I believe, is that God would set us afire. And, and listen, I'm not through. And put a consistent, everybody say consistent. I just don't want to get stirred once in a while. Put a consistent fire in me. Well, I wake up every morning and I'm talking to Jesus. I wake up every morning and I say, this is the day the Lord shall come. I wake up every morning and say, this is the day another miracle is coming my way. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. That's what it's about. Now, 
We can minister to one another, and that's what I want you to do. I want everybody. I don't want, we don't, nobody's shy. You got the Holy Ghost. You got boldness. Nobody's shy. Everybody, find somebody you can minister to right now. Come on, move. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody grab my pant leg here. Hallelujah. Bless her, Jesus. All right. You found that person. I want you to lift your voice and pray for them that the fire of God will fall in their life. Come on. Find someone. Move. If they need a healing in their body, that they will feel the healing virtue and the power of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. Raise your voice, church. That's it. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Miracles. Powers of God. Oh, Jesus, do it now, Lord. Come on, church, come on, press in, press in, press in, press in. We're not leaving here tonight till we find victory. We're but the Holy Ghost and fire to burn in our soul. Uh, burn now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Breathe on us, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Change us, change us, change us, change us. Bend me, bend me, bend me, bend me. Woo! There's power in this place tonight. There's Holy Ghost power in this place. Jesus, yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. Change us, transform us, transform our minds, uh, change the way we think. Uh, God, move in our lives, uh, set us aflame, uh, set us afire. Holy Ghost, move in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, move in Jesus' name. Move tonight, Jesus. Uh, set us afire, God. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, Lord. That's right, that's right, that's right. Miracles, 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 multiple miracles. <laughs> 